Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Carlson, and I am the West Virginia Early Childhood Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports Coordinator, and I work with the West Virginia Behavior Mental Health Technical Assistance Center at Marshall University. We are a collaboration between the West Virginia Department of Education and the West Virginia Autism Training Center at Marshall University. With the order to stay home due to the coronavirus, you might be feeling challenged by all the changes. Your child, no doubt, may also be feeling the same way. We're gonna to talk today about five tips that are provided by the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations, I'll share their website later, that offer guidance and support for us, parents and family members, to help our little ones during this time. Tip number one, remain calm and reassuring. Even though we may not feel like it all the times ourselves, we have to model this, especially for our children. We can talk to them about things like, our leaders have made a plan for us to stay home and that keeps us safe. I'm here and I'm gonna help you stay safe. Hearing this is reassuring to children over and over again. Never hurts to say it one more time. Other things that we can talk about that reassure kids are things like, we can't go to grandma's right now, but we can call her or we can FaceTime her. Things like that would make her so happy. She loves to talk to you. Again, reassurance and remaining calm. Not just important for ourselves, but important and imperative for our children. Tip number two provided by the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations is providing positive attention. Positive attention can be provided in three specific ways. First, physical, high fives, fist bumps, and if everyone's feeling okay, even hugs. Giving that big attention physically is important for kids. Other ways, the nonverbals, are facial expressions, for example, just smiling, making funny facing, faces, letting kids know that we're there and we're proud of what they're doing. And finally, being descriptive in that attention, being very specific about what we like and what we see. So, for example, you made me so happy when you cleaned up all of your toys. Being specific is very key in providing positive attention. Teaching safety habits is tip number three. Now this is important at any time, but especially during this time when it's so important to do everything we can to help keep ourselves healthy. So safety habits for this include teaching your child how to wash their hands. And you may be thinking, well, duh, but it's a different kind of washing when you look at really taking the time to spend 20 seconds. How will you do that? Maybe sing happy birthday with your child while they're doing it, make them understand that that's the time that we have to take. With my son, we do the ABC song twice. We model, wash hands alongside with him. As you can see here, here is my son and my husband practicing that as they are singing the ABC song. Another thing that we can look in teaching safety habits right now is how to cover coughs and sneezes appropriately. Now, the elbow method is one that works well, and it's simply just doing that, teaching your child when they have to cough or sneeze, whether they're at home or at school or at the store, wherever they might be, that they just wanna take their elbow, sneeze into the elbow, <coughs> cough into the elbow, and keep covered until this is all done. Tip number four, being available. Being available by, first, listening. Make sure when your child is trying to get your attention, whether it's verbally or through acting out, that you take time and stop and listen to what it is they're trying to convey to you. Second, talk about feelings. When you notice your child might be disappointed, say things like, I know you're disappointed that you can't play with your friends right now. Come up with choices, things that they can do instead of the activity that they're missing. Next, try being responsive to their needs. So for instance, if you see them being extra jiggly or moving, or maybe you have more than one child at home and they're um, fidgeting with each other and trying to keep each other um, horse playing and it's just getting to be a little bit too much, draw attention and respond by saying things like, I see you have lots of energy. Let's see if we can get our shoes on and go outside and play. 
you can't go outside. Think about things you can do inside that involve some movement. Websites such as Go Noodle or YouTube have Cosmic Kids Yoga are just two things that are free that a lot of teachers use that you can use at home with your kids in days that may not allow us to go outside uh, if the weather isn't our friend that day. And finally, make sure you answer questions honestly and age appropriately. So for instance, if your kid is asking, why is this person wearing a mask? You might just simply say, well, they're wearing a mask because that helps keep us safe. We don't want to lie to our children, but we also know they only need to know as much information in ways that their little brains at three, four, five, or six can take in. So being responsive, being available. That's tip number four. And finally, tip number five, planning your day. Schedules and routines are important for all of us. They're actually one of the many things that we can do to help decrease stress in our daily life. So during this time when routines and schedules are definitely not what they're used to be, we want to make sure we help our kids plan their day as much as we can. This benefits you and it benefits them. Start off by making a schedule and schedule as much as possible. Create routines, new routines, and make sure that you keep them. Communicate both verbally and visually what those routines are. So things like work time, play time, movement time, time to have lunch, now it's time to go outside. Make sure you're telling kids and letting them see both verbally and visually when they're going to happen. Make sure you plan things that are fun. Every child needs something to look forward to. So making sure that's part of your daily routine. Planning activities like, hey, let's go outside and have a scavenger hunt. Maybe we can take this time this evening and let's talk about a movie that we really, really want to watch. Or maybe it's just a call to a friend or a family member over FaceTime. Whatever it is, make sure that it's something fun that you and your child can do together. And finally, and most of all, Make sure that you make a plan, but be prepared that those plans may not always come through. And we have to be flexible within that. Try your best not to let it bother you, to get you rattled, because that in turn will only do the same for your child. So plan your day, but be prepared and be flexible when things don't quite go the way you hope. And for the most part, you'll see that this is good for your child and for you. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that these tips and more great information can be found at www.challengingbehavior.org. This website is the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations. You can also find more information on our website at the West Virginia Behavior Mental Health Technical Assistance Center at www.marshall dot edu slash bmtac and you can look here for the website created by the West Virginia Department of Education. It is a specific site that was created as a response to things that families can do with their children and their children's education due to COVID-19. I want to take this time and thank you guys again. Thanks for all you're doing. Take care. Stay safe, and if you want to look us up on Facebook, we can be found at WVECPBIS. Thanks. Stay healthy, stay safe, take care. See you soon.